Hi guys, it is an absolutely just nasty, bad, depressing, cold, rainy winter day here in the end times and doomsday trailer south where I have been, I have not been more than 20 feet from where I am sitting in the past now 30 hours. I have not left doomsday trailer in uh, the year 2015. And as long as I'm sitting here and it is Friday morning, January 2nd, I might as well bring you my truncated version of my weekly ecological meltdown roundup rant where I get my newsletters from Center for Biological Diversity and mongabay.com as they survey this planet for more examples of how this planet has been going into a brick wall over the past seven days but you know for two weeks running now you know and, and I'm giving these guys a break they, they need some time off so they're just doing their annual 2014 rehashing kind of story as well you know we've we're, we're done with 2014 it's 2015 and uh, I guess I'll be back to it next week, but there's a few things limping in here on Manga Bay. Some fresh stories. Uh, and then we'll take one last look at 2014 at the end of this rant. As I say, not much coming in between Christmas and New Year's here. We, all right, let's start out down... Uh, who the hell knows where this is? Somewhere in Southeast Asia, activists call out one of the worst actors in pulp and paper. This would be Toba Pulp Lestari. If, you, if you're looking for one of the worst actors in pulp and paper, Toba is being held out as emblematic of the risk the industry's massive recent growth posed to endangered forests, talking about turning rainforest into pulp. There you go. Let's just turn them into pulp. I, I guess they just go, uh, they're, they're not even stopping at lumber anymore. Just, just go straight from rainforest to pulp. Dee, 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 dee. Here is just one example of a million on the planet. Rat eradication needed to save seabird colony. Although only a nuisance in your home on an isolated island chain off the northeastern coast of Brazil, rats pose a threat to all of these seabirds. Uh, in the remote Abrolhos National Park. And again, this is all over the planet. I've, I've had rants on this. Of course, I would change this headline uh, to Human Eradication Needed to Save Planet. Uh, you, you know, it, it, this whole thing with these rats going on to these little islands, of course rats being introduced to all of these remote island chains all over the planet uh, and taking out uh, all of these seabirds and other native wildlife that have no no defenses against these little bastards. It, it is so emblematic. It is such a microcosm of humans on planet Earth. That's why I've, I've had a couple of rants about uh, space aliens uh, coming down here and being the wildlife managers of the solar system and eradicating the main invasive species on this little remote colony, taking out every other species of planet, of colony Earth, we share the colony with. Anyway, I think I'm getting a little bit off topic. 
G. Endangered mussel still harvested for food in Laos. Hmm. Only one freshwater pearl mussel species is known to inhabit tropical water systems. However, despite being listed as endangered by the IUCN, it is still a part of the diet of villagers in northern Laos. Huh. <coughs> Amazing. The IUCN declared this little mussel endangered and the little planet nibbling villagers just kept right on eating them. Just uh, uh, imagine that. Uh, anyway, let's see. A story. Here's a video on bonobos who kiss and caress, and females display genital to genital rubbing, also called GG rubbing to communicate, bond, and reconcile. There you go. So we're getting a little bonobo porno. It's a little lesbian bonobo porno in this video. All right, I need to hurry up with this rant because I need to look at some bonobo lesbian GG rubbing. So let me move ahead quick. Okay, from... Lesbian bonobos, I guess that's in Africa, back over to Indonesia. This picture of this dead orangutan not having as much fun as the lesbian bonobos. India, Indonesia's silent wildlife killer. Hunting. Well, I guess it's silent if they're using bows and arrows. Uh... By and large, Indonesia is a peaceful country. Hmm. However, uh, not so much if you're any other species of animal other than a fellow human. Because whatever the reason why Indonesians are relatively unlikely to kill each other, such favors, the favor of not killing you, such favors are not extended to Indonesia's non-human wildlife. There you go. Okay, the next story featuring my buddy Harrison Ford, and he is a good guy. This is connecting the dots from Christmas cookies to climate change. And what this is, this is Harrison Ford doing the exact same video that I've done. Maybe, maybe uh, Harrison Ford can get more than six or seven people on planet Earth to watch it. What he's doing here is, is going up and down the aisles of, a, uh, of a, his local supermarket, looking at how many products contain palm oil in them. And he found, as has been, as I did, and uh, has been posted, that approximately one half, one half of every product in your local supermarket contains palm oil. One half, probably. If you maybe if you took salt and sugar out of the equation. I would say probably more products contain palm oil in, in the year 2014 than any other single ingredient. This shit, you never heard of this shit 20 years ago. It pretty much did not exist. And I guarantee you, your kitchen shelves are full of one of... <coughs> the biggest threats to tropical rainforests on this planet. Okay, as long as we're talking about palm oil, this is palm oil, I guess, on the, I guess this is the Philippine island of Palawan. Palawan 
palm oil presence likely to grow as industry rep denies harmful impact of palm oil. Hmm. Maybe he ought to talk to Harrison Ford about this. Plans to convert a close to 20 million acres. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Plans to convert 20 million acres of land for palm oil production on Palawan Island in the Philippines have been met with opposition from environmental and social advocacy groups with a petition to cease development sent to the United Nations Commission on Human Rights by anti-palm oil expansion tree huggers. But an industry representative denies claims that all 20 million acres will be cultivated to the detriment of wildlife in human communities, maintaining that palm oil expansion will actually be beneficial to the people of Palawan. Let's see if we have a, uh, a photo from Palawan. Did they include a photo? I don't know if my computer wants to work. While we're waiting for that photo of how palm oil expansion will benefit the people of, of uh, the Philippines, here we go. Here is, uh, I, I guess, this little guy living in this hut. Maybe he can get more of a suntan now. Uh, now that those pesky old trees, that pesky old rainforest has been scraped away, he can enjoy a sun bath. That's one way. That I guess it will be beneficial to the folks. All right, let's see what else we got here. DD going on this week. Uh, well, I this is Manga Bay's uh, spin on this story. I've already talked about this, but I just you, you know me my my number one planet-eating maggot on the planet who was the poster child of planet-eating government leaders directly in the pockets of the global corporatocracy would be Ecuador Presidente Rafael Correa. And, you know, people are always out in Ecuador. They're always yelling at me why I'm picking on their... I, you know, guys, the thing about that, about Correa that's just so fun to rant about is he is just emblematic of, of every single, every, every single uh, one out there. Every, you know, right on up, of course, leading the pack is Barack Obama. Uh, everything that Rafael Correa learned, he learned while getting his doctorate in economics at the University of Illinois. He is a U.S. trained economist. And, and what he took away from his six years of schooling with his Ph.D. in economics is how to sell out your country to the Chinese oil companies and the Canadian miners. You know, everything he learned, he, he learned right here. But uh, anyway, this is just this is one of the latest, uh, as I mentioned. Ecuador sends aid money back to Germany over planned rainforest visit. A visit to a rainforest slated for oil drilling has blown up into a diplomatic row between Ecuador and Germany. 
Ecuador has said it will no longer partner with Germany on environmental issues and will return aid money after the South American government discovered that German legislators were attempting to visit the much embattled Yasuni National Park. Uh, the country canceled the visas of the visiting German legislators and did not allow them to visit Yasuni National Park. The German legislators were set to meet with groups opposed to oil drilling in the park, which scientists say may be the most biodiverse on the planet and to see on the ground the impacts of fossil fuel extraction uh, in the Amazon. Let's see, in his weekly address, Presidente Rafael Correa lectured Germany. <coughs> Quote, Go ahead. Take your goddamn money. Well, he didn't say goddamn. If you like, we will give you another 7 million euros for training programs in respect on sovereignty and on international law. He said, Correa said the German legislators, quote, are welcome as tourists. They are welcome as brothers, but they are not welcome as supervisors. Saying that he told Germany that Ecuador, quote, stopped being a colony 200 years ago. Well, I, I, I think he should be talking to China instead of to Germany, it seems to me, if, if he wants to be lecturing people treating his country as a colony to rape and pillage, why didn't he talk to goddamn China? He, because, of, well, obviously, the reason he's not talking to China is because he is rolling out the red carpet to China to come in and rape and pillage his colony. Korea's government has been cracking down on environmental groups as criticism over Yasuni National Park and other and environmental issues have mounted. A year ago, the government shut down one of the country's biggest environmental groups, Fundacion Pachamama, over actions regarding the oil issue. Yeah, they were trying to bring a, the Pachamama Alliance trying to bring attention to what's going on down there in the Ecuadorian Amazon, this the over-the-top environmental catastrophe unfolding there. So he shut them down, and then it's not mentioned in this story, uh, although, although they've had other stories about it. Uh, just last month, the Ecuadorian government shot and killed uh, an, an, a, an indigenous leader on his way to the Lima climate talks uh, to talk about uh, the Ecuador government's collusion with China. And uh, anyway, but let's try to find some good news. So this one more review. Now last week I, I did the, the story, the, the top BS environmental stories of the year. Uh, I got out my bullshit detector and so they went through uh, those and now they resurfaced, they've been repackaged. Manga Bay now calling the vast majority of those stories came out as top 10 happy environmental stories of 2014. Happy environmental stories, the most positive environmental stories of the year, which is just one more way of saying the most bullshit environmental stories of the year. If you missed my rant last week, let's go over some of them. <coughs> These happy environmental stories. China 
and U.S. pledged joint action on global warming. Oh, come on now. That ain't even bullshit. That's horseshit. The year of zero deforestation pledges. Warning, warning, bullshit alert. Election of Indonesia's new president going to save the planet. That was bullshit. Deforestation drops in Brazil. Bullshit detected. Take precautions. It, it, oh, here's one. Uh, over half a million people march for climate action. Bullshit level, DEFCON 5. Uh, anyway, well, actually, we do have a good one here. Uh, okay, we're, we, we really are going to try to find, uh, find one. World Heritage Committee rejects Australia's bid to strip protected forest. It took the UNESCO World Heritage Committee literally less than 10 minutes to reject a plan by Australia, meaning that little maggot, Tony Abbott, to strip about 200,000 acres of forest in Tasmania from a World Heritage Site. The rejection proved a major embarrassment for Australia, which lobbied hard to remove the, remove the forest from uh, UNESCO protection so it could be logged. There you go. Talking about Japanese whaling. Uh, let's see, this was some good news. Chile drops mega dams in Patagonia. In June, Chile's highest administrative authority killed a highly controversial five-dam project in the nation's famously rugged Patagonia region. The dams would have dammed two rivers in the region. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, Good for them. And here's this one, of course. New York bans fracking. There you go. We've been over that one. And this last one, uh, they leave with a question mark. The final one, Soko International pulls out of Virunga for now. I've had several uh, rants on this. In June, the British oil company, Soco International, said it was suspending exploratory activities in Verunga National Park. But the announcement ended up being a bit of bait and switch. Yes, uh, it, it, ha it is. The company, which had already received approval from the government, I guess that was the Uganda government, uh, would have been nice if they had said that, uh, already re received approval from them, has left the door open to returning to Varanga depending on the results of its fossil fuel surveys. A, a UNESCO World Heritage Site, Virunga National Park, is also Africa's oldest and home to half of the world's mountain gorillas, among thousands of other species. So, is Virunga actually safe? from Soko International drilling plans? Only time will tell. Well, we'll see how it plays out with Soko, but, but, but you understand that the government of uh, Uganda, which is pretty much a carbon copy uh, of the government of Ecuador, giving uh, China uh, permission to drill in the most biodiverse uh, national park in its country, if, if SoCo International does not want the oil in Virunga National Park, you better goddamn believe that the government of Uganda 
if I've got it right. It doesn't matter which goddamn government is. I don't give a shit if it's Uganda or the Congo. Uh, they'll just give it. They'll, they'll just give it to the Chinese oil companies. It makes no goddamn difference. Do you get it, guys? If anybody on planet Earth is believing for one minute uh, that Virunga National Park is not going to be sold off uh, to the oil drillers, uh, the uh, I, I, I got one thing to tell you. Bullshit. That's the, the only thing at this point uh, on January 2nd, 2015, that is going to save Virunga National Park's ass from the oil companies is the price of oil. That is the only thing that's going to save uh, Virunga and Yasuni and, and, and the bottom of the goddamn ocean is if we keep the price of oil uh, down there. We are, you know, the planet is dependent on Saudi Arabia. Anyway, uh, that's a whole nother rant about the price of oil saving the planet, but uh, I'm going to wrap up this, this week's uh, truncated version of my ecological meltdown roundup rant and decide what the hell I'm going to do with the rest of my day. Maybe I'll get more than 20 feet from this couch in the next 24 hours. For this rant, bye guys.